In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, a quick build, and a review on the brand new Fractal Design Focus 2 RGB white TG case. We're going to go completely through the case, that way you have a better understanding of what you might be buying. Then we're going to be doing a quick build for those of you that might already know how to build. And then we're going to do a complete review, including thermals, sound testing, and more. And for those of you that may not know how to build a PC, I have something in store for you. Stick around, I'll show you in a little bit. But anyway, let's get started. All right, so jumping into it, here we can see Focus 2 computer case, the diagram of the case itself and product specifications. Coming along the side over here, the big old Fractal F, model number, model name, EAN, UPC, and JAN codes some product specifications along the back, and then a kind of blown apart diagram of the case itself. And then nothing more than the Fractal F and Focus 2. So let's open it up real quick. Coming along the top here, just making sure nothing falls out. So there is this filter along the top. There's nothing along the top here, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over real quick. Taped to the bag along the bottom, we'll find the extended radiator bracket manual. We'll get back to this in one sec. What we saw earlier, one of the filters. Then along the back, taped, we'll find this little baggie with the user's guide and everything as well. So let's get to this real quick, then we'll get back to the case. Okay, then we'll find the focus user's guide. This will have a lot of information you might need on everything you can fit inside the case, how to build inside of it. It will give you some pointers on all that. Good information. But we're going to go over all of that in this video here but this is something you want to keep in your back pocket. And then the attention document. In case something happens before you return this case, give Fractal a call first. They might be able to help you. And then here is the filter that would go along the very top of the case, wrapped up in some bubble wrap. Then magnetic here to stick to the case. Then the extended radiator bracket. Now this, I kind of shunned before, but it's actually incredibly important in case your liquid cooling unit doesn't quite fit on its own. This is incredibly handy for allowing you to move the filter over to the side enough for it to fit inside of this case. Kind of goes over a little bit here of how that works. This is awesome. If you need it, of course. And then these are the brackets and screws and everything required for that. So this is definitely good to have. If you don't need it at that time, don't throw it away. Just put it away. You never know when you may need it. All right. So here we can see the case with the side panel on. Now, one thing I can already tell that I don't like is the case itself is white, but then the frame of this side panel is black. I'm not a big fan of that, but if you notice the inside of the case is black or at least the panels inside so that might help it out a little bit and we'll see how much more we like it or dislike it while we're building into it so i'm going to go ahead and remove this on there sounds beautiful and i'm going to go ahead and unscrew the side panel the side panel has regular thumb screws and they are loose they're not in incredibly tight and I'm putting my hand here in case the panel decides to fall out but it's not it's you have to slide it out first and then it'll come out then there'll also be a film right in here I love that sound all right and then they also have a little lip here which I think you should be able to see this little lip sticking out that has the fractal logo right over here and at first i thought it was a shroud but there is no shroud here 
So this might be incredibly interesting. All right, we'll get into the inside in one sec. Let's do the outside first. Okay, so then right over here, we can fit up to a 120 millimeter fan. This does not have a vertical mount, but they do sell an adapter, which I'll go ahead and list down below that you can fit a vertical mount here. This has seven IO expansions and they are breathable as well. So allowing air to be pulled in or pushed out. And then we'll find here where we can put the power supply. And there is along the bottom here, a filter for the power supply, just big enough for the power supply. And then I'll undo these thumb screws. Now this side has a little handle that you can just slide out and then remove that side panel. This is a solid side panel. Nothing crazy about this. And then the rear of the case. Now being that the case itself is white, it's kind of shocking to see this is black, but at the same time, it's actually kind of cool. Okay, immediately we can see right over here is where you would put two SSDs. And it's kind of shocking to see right along here, everything black when the entire case is white. So it's kind of cool though. Then over here immediately we can see the spot for two SSDs and then two 3.5 inch mounts, which the mounts themselves can be also 2.5 inch. And then we have some holes right over here for cable management and here as well. And then of course, right along here, as well as the back over here for the rear plate for the CPU. Then we have the filter right up front and I feel like you can pull it out just yet, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Then we have the inside of the case. Now, Fractals decided to make things a little bit different on this one by not including a shroud. It is a little bit shocking to see. Right over here, they have a baggie with all the accessories. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for now. And then over here, we can see a HD audio connection, USB 3.0 connection, SATA power connection, and then a power connection for the front panel button to turn the computer on. Plug this into the motherboard. Okay, so four simple cables, nothing crazy. Then right over here, just above where the power supply would be is a hole here to route some cables through, up through over here, maybe for the motherboard. And then over here for the front panel of the motherboard, and then maybe some power cables going through here. I'm not exactly sure just yet. I haven't seen where everything's going to go. We can see right over here, there are four anti-vibration pieces of foam, well, to keep it from vibrating, causing noise, the power supply when the fans are spinning up. And then under here is the filter, the cutout, and then the filter on the bottom for your power supply fan, sucking cool air from the bottom into the power supply. Along the back over here, we can find the mounting location for a 120 millimeter fan to keep costs low. They've decided not to include a fan here, which may be good for a lot of you, maybe not so good for others. Some of you may decide to throw away those fans in favor of your favorite fan. That's not a bad thing, but some of you might prefer to keep that fan. So definitely something to think about. Then right over here, the IO for your motherboard. Included at the very front are two 140 millimeter Aspic RGB fans. It's not only nice that they included those fans, but they're RGB as well. Don't worry if you don't like RGB, you can turn it off. And at the very top of the case, we can fit up to a 240 millimeter radiator or two 120 millimeter fans. Up at the front, we can fit a 360 or a 280 millimeter radiator or two 140 millimeter fans like we have already or two 120 millimeter fans. As I was showing you before, this is the filter for the power supply. Washable filter, so take it off, wash it, let it dry, then you can put it right back. Right over here, they're going to list the model number of the case and the serial number and the feet are about half an inch tall. The taller the better, of course, that way your power supply can breathe a little bit more. Now, the case from the very front to the rear is 18 inches. The case itself from the bottom to the top is almost 18 inches as well. And it is eight inches in width, 
from the base to the side panel is about eight inches as well so that's some clearance for your cpu cooler along the top of the case over here we can see there is a type c placement though it does not include a usb type c header we would need to buy that separately connect it back over here and then we can utilize this type c usb connection it includes two USB 3.0, the microphone 3.5 inch jack, and the headphone 3.5 inch jack. The RGB button, in case you don't have RGB, it will still function with RGB. And the power button. And in case you forget, Fractal Focus 2, printed right on the case. Now, I don't know why they've chosen to do this, but this is where you could put the top mounted liquid cooling unit. As you can see, this is why it can only fit a 240. Maybe, just maybe, if they would have gone a little bit further, if possible, they could have fit a 360, maybe a 280. But anyway, this is what we have to work with. And this would be the filter. If you're going to have a liquid cooling unit blowing air out of the case or exhausting, I highly recommend you don't use this because you don't want to block airflow going out. You might want to block airflow going in to catch some dust. Coming along the back, right over here is where you would fit a USB type C connection if you bought this separate module. But then here would be the cable for the power button, the RGB button, the microphone header, the HD audio header, and the USB 3.0 all going along over here. And then along the front of the case right over here, we have the RGB cables as well as the fan cables. And just to show you how long they would be. So it looks like it will reach all the way from the front of the case to almost the rear of the case. Plenty of length to reach the bottom and the top of the case and a little origami over here. So you'd be good with these cables. Again, these are Aspect 14 fans. Now getting to the accessories bag. Okay, first off, they include six of these tiny zip ties and then eight of these rubber grommets to do a little absorbing on the screws if you're using mechanical drives then four of the power supply screws the kind that have the little teeny tiny hex heads Eight of the mounting screws for your motherboard and eight of the drive screws for your mechanical drives looks like also for your SSDs as well and we'll go over that in a little bit the tray of this case will support up to an ATX motherboard but it will also support micro ATX and mini ITX this is what's inside of the build without wasting too much time going over each and every component. If you want to find the list of what's inside of the system, check in the description below. Let's start with the build.
I went ahead and dimmed the lights a little bit so that you can get a better look and feel of how the system is going to look like when all the RGB lights are going to be lit. Two up here, two along the front, then the RAM itself, and then the video card, and there'll be a few other little spots within the system, but we'll see in one second. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. So now that all the Windows updates, all the drivers, Windows is installed, the BIOS is updated and configured, and the entire machine is built, now we need to do some testing. So to do proper testing, we're going to go ahead, put the side panel back on. So when I initially opened up this case, I thought I wasn't going to like it because of the black frame on a white case, but that black frame over here looks like it's the power supply shroud and it kind of looks good with it. Zooming out a little bit more so we can see more of it. I don't think it looks bad at all. And if you listen really carefully, you'll hear just how quiet the system is. So. Now, this is about six inches away from the side of the PC. Moving it over here to the back directly behind it. The system is incredibly quiet and we have two fans along the top on the radiator, two fans along the front, then we have the pump, and then we have two fans on the video card, as well as a fan on the power supply, and it's keeping incredibly cool. Now, my house is at 66 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 18.8 .8 degrees Celsius. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be testing the CPU so we can see at a minimum, we're running anywhere between 3.6 gigahertz up to 4,899 or 4.9 gigahertz. And the CPU is anywhere between 26 or 25.4 and 49.9 degrees at the package level. So incredibly cool there. The video card between 30 and 32 degrees. So incredibly cool and quiet there. So now let's go ahead and throw some IDA 64. You can already hear everything starting up. Then we'll do a stability test. We'll leave all of this here, CPU, FPU, cache, and system memory. And then we'll go ahead and start it. Let's get rid of that. And that, so we only have the CPU temperature. So I'm gonna leave this running for about 30 minutes and I'll come right back to you. All right, so now at 38 minutes, well actually 39 minutes, we can see we're at about 38 dB and we've gotten as high as 68 degrees Celsius. And you can see here, we're running at 100%. Coming over here to task manager. We can see every single core is being utilized 100%, 4.38 gigahertz. Uptime 49 minutes, but we've been stressing for almost 40 minutes now and the temperatures are amazing and the noise level is amazing. Again, we're at 66 degrees Fahrenheit in this house, which is 18.8 .8 degrees Celsius, ambient temperature, cool air coming in through the front of the PC. So we can see the front of the PC, 21 degrees, just coming down 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 21 degrees. Just scanning all around to verify how cold or how warm the air is coming from the front of the PC. So nice and cool along the rear of the PC. Now this isn't 
totally accurate because there is no fan here so it's not really exhausting air but we're about 26 degrees 25 degrees moving all around 27 so that we can get different air temperatures or different temperatures air temperatures all right so a little a lot of that is hitting the motherboard now at the top of the pc right over the radiator 27 degrees 28 so everything's nice and cool and again this is a 240 millimeter radiator i do feel some heat coming out but it's not incredibly hot the microphone is about a foot away from the top of the radiator i'm gonna move it down a little bit more so you can see it so now we're about maybe four inches from the microphone and you can hear just how loud it is this system is whisper quiet and the temperatures are amazing now that's just stressing the cpu let's stress the gpu real quick now i just started up 3d mark and it does rev up the fans a little bit not by much but we can see in the top left hand corner temperatures for the gpu the edge temperature a few others they're kind of looks a little backed up but let's go ahead and run times by extreme 99 passes there we go things look a little bit better it might straighten up in a second so at 808 i'll come right back that'll be 30 minutes all right now coming back 30 minutes later well, maybe 33 minutes later now, I had another PC on, I didn't realize it, but let's see how quiet it is. So stressing the GPU, we're at about 34 dB. Very nice and quiet. We can see the temperatures on the screen, 54 degrees Celsius on the GPU, 84 degrees on the edge, 160 watts being utilized by the video card, 161. The CPU has gotten to 48 degrees Celsius at 4.8 megahertz and then 30 frames per second. So coming behind the video card, behind the exhaust, up to let's say 41 db so incredibly quiet and let's see she's about 36 degrees 30 so not very hot at all then along the front of the pc We got 42 dB there, so very quiet. And about 20 degrees. So that's not going to change because the ambient temperature hasn't changed very much. Still 66 degrees. This barely heats up the room at all. And at the very top of the PC, we're about, let's say, three inches from the radiator. Directly above it, we'll hit about 39 dB. Oh, 41. So incredibly quiet there as well. And even though we're testing the GPU, 32 degrees, it is exhausting that heat. Just remember, there is nothing along the rear of the case exhausting directly over the video card. This is just taking all the heat from the system, 33 degrees and exhausting it from the top through the radiator. Again, it's a 240 millimeter radiator running a Ryzen 9 5900X processor. Doesn't get very hot. So the Fractal Design Focus 2 RGB case, this particular one in white with the glass side panel is such an amazing case, I think it's awesome, especially for being not the smallest, but a smaller case. The video card measures 11.5 inches and between the rear of the video card and the front of the case, 
you have another six inches worth of space. That's tremendous. On the power supply, you typically have a shroud down here. Fractal has decided not to put a shroud to leave it open, but they added a little pocket along the side where you can route cables in and it fits perfectly fine. You can see down here, there isn't a rat's nest worth of cabling. It's all molded in there perfectly, zip tied and everything, and it looks great. Then on the bottom along the front of the case, we have so much more space, kind of wasted space. What can we put there? So yes, I just put my Spider-Man figure right inside the case. I had so much room, I could. Now, so much room, not really because the largest liquid cooling unit we can add at the very top is a 240 millimeter. Now, at the front, we can fit a 280 or a 360, but we're going to impede airflow. And the front of the case typically is the most important to get nice and cool, fresh air. But, you know, pick and choose your battles. On this particular system, we're running an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X processor, which doesn't get incredibly hot, especially with a 240. The hottest it's got was maybe 70 degrees. Now, mind you, if you were using a 59 50 it might hit 73 but that's still incredibly cool and intel core i9 12900 kf processor might get a little hot but as long as you don't do any overclocking you'd be fine the case comes with two 140 millimeter fans up along the front which are also rgb as you can see here and then i was able to control not only those front fans but the top fans and the ram through the rgb software on the motherboard mind you it doesn't really matter so much because it's the motherboard not the case but i wanted to mention that there are also rgb controls along the top of the case that allow you to use the rgb on the fans and the case without having rgb inside of your motherboard so that's a bit of a bonus for for those of you that may not have RGB ports. The build process was incredibly simple inside of this case. I didn't have any issues and the fact that there was no power supply shroud here was awesome. Along the back, we were able to place all the cables nicely towards the bottom. It was a little tiny bit of a rat's nest, but that's okay, not a big deal. It's in the back, we couldn't tell. Even though we had that rat's nest of cabling down there, we were able to put the side panel on perfectly without a huge bulge and without having to push it all together and slide it and screw it in and then breathe. <laughs> we were, we didn't need to do that. It went in perfectly smooth. We had plenty of space beneath the rear of the motherboard tray and the outer portion where the side panel actually makes contact with the case. Now, we were able to utilize one of the two SATA 2.5 inch drive bays. Now, there's another three that we could have used over here, and I showed you how to include a 3.5 inch and another 3.5 inch, and that would have worked fine, or you could have swapped it out for another three 2.5 inch drives. So, there isn't a ton, but there is quite a few spaces for drives inside of this case. You're not going to be hurting for space in any way you can put it. One of the downfalls was it does not include the USB Type-C connection. It has the port for when you're ready to buy the module, you can pop it in there and then use it because not everybody has USB-C or some of us that do have USB-C don't have any USB-C devices, so we don't care about it at that moment. Now, mind you, adding that USB-C, adding a larger top for larger than a 240 millimeter radiator, adding fans at the top, adding a fan at the rear, that would have driven the cost up a little bit more. A lot of times, some people are going to throw away the front fans and the rear fans in favor of their own fans. So Fracto decided, you know what? We're only going to put two in there, the bare minimum. And you saw here, we didn't include a rear one and it worked perfectly fine. The case didn't bring one. So we didn't want to add an extra fan to make the scores a little bit better. We wanted to make it more realistic for you. The filters along the bottom, the front, while it is a filter, it's not really a filter. You can't take anything off and wash it. It's got its own little grill there that you can actually remove if you wanted to change the fans, but you're not going to be, maybe you could dust it off, take it off, dust it, then put it back, but that's not really a filter. And then there's a filter along the top that if you're using that to exhaust, I wouldn't add one myself, but you could. So it's nice. It does include filters as well. Now, the case was actually almost too small for that 240 millimeter radiator, but because they did include that extended radiator bracket, it allowed me to move the radiator ever so slightly over to the left or to the right, closer to the glass, giving it plenty of room, not only for the RAM, but for the heat sink on the motherboard itself. That's something that a lot of companies haven't thought about. Fractal's been doing it for a little bit now, and it's pretty awesome. For all the features it brings, 
that little hole here on the very bottom for the power supply and all the cables, the extender up at the very top for the liquid cooling unit, the two front 140 millimeter RGB fans. I think this is a pretty awesome case, especially for 70 bucks. That's pretty awesome. You're spending so much on everything inside of the system. They help you with such a nice case that you don't have to spend very much on. I appreciate that a ton. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. I'd love to help you with any questions you have on this case. This is Iggy with This Bites For You doing a complete top-down review of the Fractal Design Focus 2 RGB in white case. Iggy with This Bites For You out. See you guys.